All right, time to print these labels for release. Hey, who are you? Guess I imagined it. Agent 47, we must take down Providence once and for all. Try to disguise yourself as that office worker. Use any means necessary. Roger that. Good YouTube, it's your boy Rashad, and I am back with another video for y'all. So today I'm gonna be covering something unique. It's a game series that I've never played before. It's gonna be Hitman, Hitman 3 to be exact, for the PS5. Let's not waste any time and let's just jump right on into it. It's time we start afresh, you and me. Get to the point. I've always been a little curious about the series. I noticed that there's like a bunch of spin-offs and the games are pretty high rated for the most part. So I figured, you know, what the hell, might as well give it a try, but it's kind of one of those series that I always passed up, like the Yakuza series is another example that I probably am gonna get into and make a review for, you know, the next iteration of that game as well. Went ahead and dropped the $60. You know, here I am. Remember, I've never played a Hitman game before, so my opinions will be very raw. The story revolves around the cold test tube engineer clone, Agent 47. He works with a close partner, Diana Burnwood, in an attempt to take down the elite secret society known as Providence. So they're essentially like an Illuminati of this particular world, controlling the world through politics and economics from an ivory tower with no accountability, using nothing but wealth, and you guessed it, killing anyone who gets in their way. That's where Agent 47 comes in. Apparently he was brainwashed and has been used by Providence for years in the previous games to kill off all their opposition. Agent 47 eventually becomes privy to this fact and begins to resent Providence in a Hitman 3 the inevitable goal is to take them out once and for all. That there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Now, I don't know if any of that sounds interesting to y'all, but for me, it wasn't that interesting. I felt like the overarching story for the game was kind of dull and boring. I really wish that there was some additional level of personality to the game to really uh, oomph it up and make it feel like just more fun in terms of the overarching story. Similar to how games like Metal Gear Solid did with Solid Snake and how the Deus Ex series did with Adam Jensen. Both games with a whole lot of stealth elements and a lot of personality enough to where you feel like you enjoy the main characters, you enjoy the overarching story. I was a little disappointed by that element of the game. Could you speed up time so I don't die from boredom? Being as blunt as possible here, the graphics are good, like really good. Just don't expect any really amazing artwork and creativity. I suppose it's debatable depending on the type of personality and your personal taste, but the artistic flair was kind of missing to me in a very competitive gaming market. You're probably not going to be that impressed with what they have here, but the game does deliver graphics from a technical perspective very well. Yo, this man just touched her ass. Alright, Agent 47, I see you. Let's talk about the gameplay for the game. So you can do the mission structure in two different ways. The freeform mission structure, which is how I did things the first time through the game. And then there's the story missions, which I did my second playthrough. My first time through the game, I beat every level without knowing that you were suggested to try the mission stories first for guidance. I 100% recommend to anyone to do the mission stories first 
even if you don't really know how to activate them or how to do them, whatever you do, try to activate them and try to stay on track because you can even lose your ability to follow it through that mission if you do the wrong thing or execute something improperly. So whatever you do, if it's your first Hitman game like me, stay on those dang story missions. Otherwise, you're probably gonna regret it. And you may not even have that much fun with the game. I was completely lost my first playthrough through the game and I did have fun, but after I did the story missions, I got a lot more involved with the story and I understood the possibility of a lot of different things that you could accomplish in the entire layout of some of the levels as well. I am so freaking lost. Where is this dude at? Are you, are you kidding me? How the... How the hell do you even get up there? Oh my god, dude. Why is this game so confusing? This is a very open-ended sandbox game centered around using any type of method within your arsenal. And not having any history with the game, I really didn't expect it. I thought the missions would be like these kind of linear, straightforward paths. So I did find it very intriguing that it's kind of this open sandbox of where you can do anything that you can imagine you can pretty much do it you can switch disguises to gain entry to new and unauthorized places and if you blow your cover all the time like i did you're really gonna need to how the f how the hell did you damn it i didn't notice okay man let me skip this bitch oh fuck <laughs> damn it <laughs> There's a bunch of items that you can pick up and you have to have them in order to perform certain useful actions later. You're strongly incentivized to learn the lay of the land and explore as much as possible. Otherwise, you will struggle a lot like me. The levels are freaking humongous and it's going to take you a very long time to traverse them no matter what, even if you know the entire level layout. And if you don't know the level layout, it's gonna take you even longer. While I was intrigued by all the levels, I was kind of put off by how large and aimless some of them could feel. I struggled really hard at the beginning, uh, even on the first level, to get around and navigate. Might be because it was my first Hitman game, but there's a lot of things you can interact with and do to make your life easier that I didn't catch on to for a couple hours. Like here, for example, you can actually destroy the security tapes, but throughout a lot of the game, I couldn't find enough situations to get people away from the target areas in order to make sure that I didn't get busted and get killed immediately. Uh, you can cut off the power or sabotage the power and things like that, but you really got to work hard on creating a distraction and an entire plan in order to execute it successfully. So one of the things you can do is turn on the water faucet, have it overflow, someone will come look, wondering what the hell's going on, and then you can like choke them out or something. So when I was doing this, sometimes an individual would never respond to whatever I was doing. I would overflow the sink and I would have the door open and all these things so that they could hear because sound is important in the game as well. And sometimes no one would come over. It would leave me wondering if I was doing something wrong or if there was a glitch or something because it seemed like they were pretty much always supposed to respond to stuff like that, but sometimes it just wouldn't. So I found that very confusing. At the same time, I did feel pretty empowered. The fact that I had so many options available, like turning on fire alarms and overflowing the water or, you know, throwing something to make a sound. Like there's so many different things that you can do and so many options that are available. You will feel strongly encouraged and empowered to try as many things as possible. Besides knocking the shit out of enemies and hiding their body in a closet somewhere, you can also do stuff like shoot enemies with a sniper rifle. It can be a little tough to find the location of the sniper rifle sometimes, but a great option to have nonetheless. You can get into some gunfights in the game, whether or not it's unintentional or intentional. Most of the time it's going to be unintentional because you're going to get busted and you're going to have to do something about it. Uh, but trust me, you're not gonna win most of the gunfights, so you just might as well load the game or start over or something, because it just ain't happening. Oh, 
Does this shit work? Alright, fuck him up real quick. Alright, one down. Can you take this bitch weapon? Oh fuck, he's getting back up though. Act like this bitch. <laughs> what the fuck? He got back up again? <laughs> oh shit. Damn, I don't have no weapons on me. This shit is ridiculous. How much bullets they got? They came so fucking fast. One down. Boom. Oh shit. Let's get into one of the most important elements of the game, the assassinations. You can eliminate your foes in a variety of different ways. You can use standard headshots, explosions, poison, and then things get a lot more creative after that. There's a mission where you sneak into this well-secured, extremely well-guarded laboratory and you assassinate this lady, you can do it using a reactor. You turn her own reactor that she created against her. <laughs> Another one of my favorite missions is in one of the locations in China. There's this laboratory where these extremely scummy scientists are taking advantage of these homeless individuals who are essentially the forgotten people of the world. And they are taking them in, promising them a better life and a job and all these things, taking advantage of their desperation and doing scientific experiments against them. Knowing that nobody's gonna question where the homeless guy from down the street, the hobo from down the street, or like where he disappeared to, so no one will question that. Kind of genius, but evil genius is more like it. And it was really satisfying to be able to turn the experiments against them. This guy is trying to lobotomize and mind control these homeless individuals, doing some sort of brainwashing technique beforehand, and then afterward using a procedure to control their motor functions with his mind. <laughs> and it backfires against him because you can infiltrate as a homeless person, get all the way up into meet the scummy individual, and he's trying to mind control you, and then you fry his ass because he doesn't have the brainwashing. One of the things about Agent 47 is he's supposed to be mentally fortified. So even if they tried to brainwash him, I don't even know if it would work. And his mind is stronger than the average individual. So it is satisfying as hell just to go through that and to watch it all play out. There's a lot of other impressive moments like that throughout the game. Another one of my favorites is the very second mission of the game where you essentially help one of the leaders of Providence, Alexa Carlisle, try to unravel the secrets behind her brother's murder or suicide is what they called it. Everyone in the house is hella snooty, super duper rich, typical spoiled brats who play politics and whatnot uh, amongst even their own family and close friends. You can explore both the inside and outside of the mansion, and there's so many clues and characters and people to talk to, not to mention this really eerie vibe that goes along with it the entire time. There's even like music that goes along with it and helps to add to that vibe as you're searching the mansion for clues and whatnot. I found myself really engrossed more so into this sub story than the entire main story for the game. Oh shit, they got a secret passageway. You can can you see is you can you see right through? I thought that was a mirror. You can see straight through to the room. Yo, they got the peepholes in a chair in this you know they on some freaky shit. That second mission almost felt like a totally different game than the rest of the game. And this is from a guy who played the entire game. So I want to say I'm pretty impressed with that. I don't know if the other games had things like that. And I kind of had mixed feelings about it because I was like, man, I kind of wish the rest of the game 
was similar to that second mission, which on paper seems like it could easily be one of the most boring missions ever, <laughs> but it actually ended up for me being the best mission in the game, definitely the most interesting. And I was kind of mixed and a little disappointed with the fact that the main story didn't really intrigue me and engross me as much as figuring out this murder mystery that took a fraction of the overall time to complete versus the main story of the game. Alexa, back from the dead, a make-believe funeral, a murder mystery, oh, all too much. There's a bunch of different challenge types and I'm not gonna cover every single one, but I will list a couple. There's the assassin challenge, discovery challenge, and classics. To get into more detail, the assassin challenges, you have to get like every single type of kill imaginable in all the missions. So some of them can be quite difficult. One example is you blow up two of your targets at the same time and you really don't have any clue on how the hell you're supposed to get these two targets in the same place because they are literally, they might as well be across the country <laughs> considering how far away they are within the stage and they're just in totally disparate places. So you have to come up with something totally drastic in order to get them to be in the same place at the same time. Carl, did you do that? Hello darkness, my old friend. The discovery challenges involve finding every single portion or location within a certain mission. And as I mentioned, the missions can be freaking humongous. So it's actually a little harder than you might anticipate. Uh, it, the last thing that I didn't even attempt is the classic challenges where you have to do things like not be seen once, don't use any disguises, don't cause any physical damage or touch anything. Just ridiculous, you pretty much have to play perfectly. I didn't even bother trying this because hell, I can hardly beat the missions with all the tools and resources that I had at my disposal already. So what the hell do I look like trying to get up in there and not use no disguises, not harm anyone, not be seen? Forget it. Okay, let's try this. Supposed to make a noise or... Oh, there it goes. Hey, you that's gonna run! Fuck. <laughs> they smacked the shit out of her. Shit. Oh, no, of course. <laughs> There's <laughs> too many people over here. There's <laughs> too many people over here. My dumb ass trying to fucking drag the body. I never tried fake surrender before. Let's see how this works. Oh shit, I didn't know he was gonna attack after that. Fuck. I'm so fucked. Oh, and the dude's getting back up. Fuck, man. The soundtrack in the game was really good. It was surprisingly good, actually. I really didn't know what to expect from the game. I will say that it wasn't necessarily incredible because you're probably not gonna remember most of the sounds from the game. It wasn't catchy, like it didn't have that old school catchy flair to it. It didn't have that super duper customized feel like the Metal Gear Solid series as an example. You know, I've referenced that a couple times at this point. But there's something that kind of felt like it was missing from the soundtrack, along with some of the other areas of the game, as if it was missing like this one artistic touch that would have really put it over the edge. Greetings, sir. One of the strongest things that Hitman 3 has going for it is the replayability. There's so many different challenges and missions that you really aren't gonna run out of things to do very quickly. You can start the same missions in new locations with different costumes and disguises. You can start with different weapons. There's a lot of things to change up the pace for the different missions so that you can do them continuously and it doesn't really get stale very fast. Discovering all the different methods to execute your victims, now that can be extremely satisfying because it's kind of like a puzzle to figure out like, how do I get this individual into this fucked up situation <laughs> so that I can murder them, you know? There's a bunch of DLC 
And that's one thing that I kind of was annoyed with, but technically it is additional content. So if that floats your boat, then whatever, I didn't buy any of it. It's time for some negatives. For whatever the hell reason, I completed some challenges in the game and I wasn't connected to the internet and none of my challenges were recorded. This game requires an online connection at all times, even to play the single player. So you can still play, but you won't get any challenge completion. I don't know what the hell is going on with this, but whatever this trend is, I don't like it. I remember they, they tried it like with, I think The Sims 4 and a couple other games and their servers crashed and people couldn't even play. So it's not to that extent, but considering how much I told you guys, I struggled when I first started playing the game. So when I completed some of those challenges, it was a one and done for me, that was it. <laughs> so to have that progress erased because I wasn't connected to the internet really pissed me off, not gonna lie. If we could only unite across time, we could crush them all. There's a few minor graphical glitches, but they were pretty rare, so I suppose I can give it a pass. Uh, some of the level's layouts were massive and confusing. That's something that actually bothered me a lot at first. I grew to admire it, and I kind of always admired it from the beginning, but it definitely feels intimidating, even for a guy who's a pretty serious gamer like myself. So if, I feel like if I was kind of off put by it, someone who doesn't really play games as often or has never played stealth games and whatnot is really gonna struggle with the game. So like, I'll give you an example, Banjo-Tooie. For anyone who remembers that old game on the N64, Banjo-Tooie was uh, known for being a very humongous game, but it was really too large. And they did the same thing with the spiritual successor, Ukulele. Just overly large levels and just large for the sake of it. Stuff like that is kind of a turn off for me. So I just really don't like that. I feel like smaller and more consistent levels are better for myself. There's one in particular that I really did like though, including the size of the level, was the level in China. I don't exactly know how to pronounce the actual city that it was, but this level was straight lit. I'm still debating if I like it for the aesthetic and vibe reasons, uh, or if I like the estate level better. I feel like the estate level, you know, with the mansion and all that stuff, that one was probably still my favorite due to the murder mystery aspect. But both of those levels were great and they're definitely my favorites for different reasons. Yo, look at this. This chick has no energy, no rhythm, like literally nothing going, not even dress nice. Like, come on, what the hell? Again, one of the biggest drawbacks for me was story. I really love stories in games, so not having a story that really engrossed me, like I feel like if I didn't play another Hitman game, I really wouldn't care that much because even though the gameplay is fun, that type of game I feel like deserves a more involved story. So if anyone liked the story, that's, that's cool, but for me, it just felt very barren and lifeless and I get what they were going for. It's almost as if that is really what they're going for is because Agent 47 is kind of like that. And that's the type of story is, is just kind of dry. So his character is dry and the story's kind of dry. So I really didn't like that, but that's not the biggest problem with this game. The biggest issue is the damn DLC. I hate that the fact that there's so much DLC in the game, there's like a bunch of levels. I got excited as hell. I went to the level selection or location selection and there's like all these different locations. I was like, oh man, it's gonna take me forever to finish this shit. And I went, I clicked the button and it says access now or something along those lines. I'm like, man, what the freak, man? I knew as soon as I saw that, I saw it's, it's like all grayed out and shit. I already knew, I'm like, okay, this is gonna be DLC. I checked one after the next, after the next. All DLC levels and locations, apparently they're like from the previous game. So if I owned the previous Hitmans, I'd have access to them. But since I don't, I don't have access. Now, if all the games were similar in length, then I guess I don't have any reason to complain, but 
just having them there just kind of taunting me this annoys the hell out of me because that's one of my issues with the game the levels were too large and if you happen to not like one of them you're just kind of stuck and you got to deal with it as opposed to having a variety of different locations available i paid 60 bucks for the game now you're telling me i gotta pay another 30 dollars 30 dollars 30 <laughs> like that's not a small number when i just paid 60. so no i'm not buying the dlc that significantly increases the fun factor of the game and the replayability and whatnot even more that's one thing but at that point you're talking about a totally different product i bought the 60 dollars product so that's what i'm gonna judge you planned this all of it it's time for the final score for the game what do i give it i'd probably have to give it a solid seven out of ten so i did enjoy the game want to make that clear some people act kind of weird like as if a seven is like you hated the game or something but i did enjoy the game i just felt like it had some weaknesses so some of the levels were really amazing some of them were just less amazing and they just they were just big and confusing but you can still do a lot of fun stuff in all of them and some of the levels even my favorites had some things about them that i didn't enjoy some of the dialogue was like you might as well stop talking like it, so it'll be boring dialogue. There's never any romance. I deserve romance. The cutscene stuff was pretty good, but there's a lot of voice acting in the game, including during gameplay. And like, for example, if you got killed or something and you needed to reload and play a certain part, you have to hear all that stuff again and go through all the same sequences again. And there's really no way to skip some of that. I'm not exactly sure how they could have addressed that, but it still ended up being a problem for me regardless of if I have a perfect solution for it or not. So there's just some things where I feel like from a technical standpoint, they perfected almost everything from a technical standpoint. It's like they did everything right. This was produced by uh, partially by Square Enix. That's kind of their thing these days is getting everything together from a technical standpoint, all the pieces of the puzzle fit together. But from the soul, it's like it's missing something right so for anyone looking for like their next big stealth fix i suppose another metal gear solid is i don't know maybe never coming out <laughs> so you know if you've already played the Deus Ex games and so and so forth this is definitely not a bad solution because the the open world aspect of it is really fun there's a lot of different things that you can do it is definitely a unique game i really haven't played anything quite like it so if you're looking for a stealth game and you're okay with being a little confused at first play the game you'll probably enjoy it maybe a lot more than i did especially if you're looking to pay for that dlc you're gonna have tons of content because that that list of dlc for that 30 dollars was humongous <laughs> So some people might be like, that's a good thing. They got $30 worth of DLC and they got tons of value if you pay for it. I can't make the call on that because I'm not paying that much. I got other reviews to do for y'all. So if you liked it, please give a video a like. Share the content. There's going to be more to come. i catch y'all next time. I appreciate the support. Peace.